blessing for us um, agents. I know we, I know I personally ask her a bazillion questions um, each year. She's always willing and and uh, happy to assist uh, with anything I should have question wise. So um, it is 559. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Sharon. I know that she has some um, things that she has to get to after the meeting's over. So we'll keep her right on time. So thanks, Sharon. Hey, thanks, April. I'm not for sure. I don't think my camera's working on here. I don't know if it's because I'm doing the screen sharing or what, but it's not letting me pick up the camera. That's okay. Um, as that's, voice. that's probably a good thing. So that way you all don't have to see me. So that's a good thing. Um, well, hey guys, it's um, I'm so glad to be joining you guys tonight. Uh, put in the chat, sure do wish that it was in person. I tell you what, for the last couple of years, about a year and a half so, we've been doing the Zoom training, but it's, it's great. So that way you all can come in because I don't know if where you all are at, the sun is shining bright. It's absolutely beautiful out here tonight. So let's see if we can go on and get you guys started and then let you get outside to a little bit more daylight. So again, I'm Sharon Spencer. Um, April made me sound like I've been around for a long, long time. <laughs> um, but I have been with the Kentucky Department of Agriculture. Um, been in most of your all's counties and probably talked with most of your all's producers. And I tell you what, guys, y'all have got some of the best extension agents and everything that money can buy. Oh, wait a minute. Did I say money can buy? No, actually, they are really great. We, uh, I love our UK extension. Um, I always rely on them on, on such a valuable resource. And anytime you all have any problems in the county, we always push you all directly towards extension. So um, all kidding aside, they're great. They work hard and we greatly appreciate all their support. And April didn't pay me to say that too. So just to give you a little bit of information as far as what we do um, in the Kentucky Department of Agriculture, I actually work in the Office of Agriculture Marketing. Um, so what is that? Well, our mission is to um, assist our farmers, our agriculture businesses, commodity groups and promoting and marketing your products. And what we're doing is also looking for um, expanding opportunities and everything for you. So in our divisions and our programs that we have under the Office of Agriculture Marketing is the direct farm marketing, um, education and outreach, our grants, our Kentucky Proud program, which I hope everybody out here watching tonight is a Kentucky Proud member. But if not, by the time this is over tonight, we will get you signed up, no problem. We also have our livestock that does the marketing. Um, we have the plant division, pr promotion and development and the shows and fairs. So just a few program highlights are our, our ag education. Um, many of you all might, might have seen a mobile retail sell, uh, I'm sorry, a mobile science activity center travel across the, the state. Um, that goes into a lot of our schools teaching agriculture. Um, that's something very important to us because the kids are so far removed from agriculture nowadays. So we wanna make for sure everybody's got hands on. Um, we also do the market news, which is the livestock reporting. We've got the shows and the fairs. But the big thing that really involves you guys is the food safety, the horticulture side of it. Um, just to give you a, a few pictures of what I was talking about, there's the Mobile Science Activity Center that travels across the state. We have three of those trailers that goes out and teaches agriculture um, related activities and everything to our schools. We have the, many of you all have probably seen the rollover tractor. That's the rollover tractor simulator that, that um, kind of either preaches or kind of makes you aware of doing the rocks, um, which is that red bar that goes on that tractor that saves you in case you overturn. And then of course, again, like I said, our livestock marketing in our, in our stockyards. And many people is not aware of this, but when Miss Kentucky is crowned, Miss Kentucky becomes ours. She is actually an employee for the Kentucky Department of Agriculture. Um, so we've been real excited. This is Miss Kentucky uh, from last year and then also for this year. Um, she is the first Miss Kentucky that has actually had a two term. So we've been very excited. She's been doing some recordings for us, some videos. This is actually out to Sun Valley Farms, one of our horse farms um, that's in our agritourism program. And she's also went out to some roadside markets and she's been to some farmers markets and she's done some videos 
those videos go into schools. And again, it educates the consumers and it also educates our kids. So when I was talking about the Kentucky Proud program, this is the Kentucky Proud Marketing Program. We also have two other options that you can participate with, which is the Homegrown by Heroes and also Appalachia Proud. So Kentucky Proud, um, so from the very beginning in 1998, we had a tobacco buyout and there was over 84,000 farm families that was looking for some type of an alternative crop or some kind of farm income to keep that farm. They wanna make sure that they have that in the um, family for generations to come. So in 2000, there was a legislative action that was um, promoted and that was produced establishing the Kentucky Proud Marketing Program. But in 2003, the Kentucky Proud Program became one logo with one message, grown in Kentucky, produced in Kentucky, by Kentuckians with a direct Kentucky farm impact. You'll see over to the right hand side, there's a couple of logos that one logo, Kentucky Fresh, Kentucky Proud. That was the uh, logo from the previous when it first started. And of course, as of today in the top, my top left hand corner, hopefully everybody is a member of Kentucky Proud. This is the official state agriculture marketing program and anything that is produced in Kentucky, grown, raised, processed, um, packaged and manufactured in Kentucky that has a, a um, agriculture value to it can be a Kentucky Proud member. It is funded by the Kentucky Agriculture Development Fund, and we greatly appreciate those funds for supporting this program. We currently have over 10,500 active members across Kentucky. So again, um, the, the folks that's on here, if you all are not a Kentucky Proud member, very easy to join, it's free. Did I say it's free? The program is free to join. You can apply online. Um, you can go to, and we have some websites at the end of this, but it's www.kyproud.com. Sign up online. Um, this is gonna give you a logo to put on your products. And folks look for that logo. They know that that is a Kentucky product. So we have folks actually looking for that logo, especially when they come to the farmer's markets or your on-farm markets. Uh, members can apply for grant opportunities with the Kentucky Proud Promotional Grant. I'll go into a little bit more details on that. And also the Buy Local program. Uh, a lot of folks that has maybe been in this program before has known it as Restaurant Rewards Program. So we have changed the name of that. We have another opportunity, which is the Farm to Fork Grant um, that's available. And then the Kentucky Proud Livestock Tag Program. If you have any young kids that are showing livestock in the county fairs, in any of the livestock shows, and they are a Kentucky Proud animal with a livestock tag that has Kentucky Proud, they can get a higher premium. So any kind of awards that they can get, they can get a higher premium. The kids really enjoy that, especially when more money's coming in, they like that. But the main purpose of this whole Kentucky Proud program is to help our farmers, to help our producers, to increase your income, um, and also to make you kind of stand out from anybody else. So I'm a Kentucky Proud member. So what's next? What else can I participate in? Well, if you are a homegrown by hero, if you are a veteran, or if you are currently serving in the military, you can be one of our homegrown by heroes. Um, this program, very proud of this program. This is something that actually Kentucky started. And so we have this to recognize our veterans, to recognize our military. Currently right now, we have 248 members. We do ask though for you to submit documentation because we do wanna make for sure that if you do sign up for this program, that you are legitimate. And we wanna make for sure that you are a, a, either in the military or um, a retired veteran. We also have the Appalachia Proud program. Um, this program has just recently been expanded in 2019 in the SOAR counties um, that recognized Appalachia Proud. It's, it's very interesting when you look at Appalachia areas. Um, some areas go all the way as far as Hart County, which to me, Hart County is more Western Kentucky. Um, so we do have the Hart County and everything listed. So we did expand that area from 37 or 39 counties. I apologize, my dog is barking. Sorry about that. 
Um, but we did expand those counties. So from the 39 counties that we had, we expanded that to 54 counties. So we also launched a new logo. So if anybody has been in this program before and they have seen the Appalachia Proud, before it almost looks like white snow-capped mountains and, and talking to our producers and talking to folks, they were just not real pleased with that. So we do have a new logo. This looks more of the Appalachia area, the mountains, the farm side, um, but this new logo and everything was launched in October of 2020. You still can continue to use the logo that you currently have. Um, but if you want to use this, we do have um, some new marketing materials and everything for you. Currently right now, we have 3,522 members in this program and it's growing. If you sign up for Kentucky Proud and you are listed in one of these counties, you do not have to apply for Appalachia Proud. You are automatically signed up. And then two, you can use the Kentucky Proud logo. You don't have to use this logo, but this is gonna make you stand out. And this is gonna make your products unique and everything to your area. So talking about grain opportunities, everybody likes money. So anything that um, we've got that can benefit you, we want you to make for sure that you take advantage of that. The grant opportunities that we have in our office is a Kentucky Proud Promotional Grant. A lot of folks refer to it as the POP grant. Also, we've got the Buy Local program and then the Farm to Fork. So the Kentucky Proud Promotional Grant, if you are a Kentucky Proud member, this is a call share that you can apply for. Now, many of our producers that has been around for a while, like me, has been around for a while, um, are they have a max um, and they have met that life cap of 36,000 that they have used. Um, but you are eligible to apply for this. If you are a Kentucky Proud member, you do have to fill out a Kentucky Proud promotional grant application. It will ask you to show a direct farm impact of what you're going to be doing. This will help you with advertising. Uh, and applications are gonna be available on our website and also on the Kentucky Proud website. Again, we've got those listed there at the bottom. But here's some examples of some of the items that you can use this Kentucky Proud um, grant for. The farmer's markets can use this. Then the, also the individual producers. If you're a Kentucky Proud member, you can also use this for your farm. Um, you can make yourself stand out at the farmer's market if you have t-shirts for everybody that's working your booth, if you've got baseball caps that's got your name, that's got your logo. Logos and branding to your farm is very important. Um, even if they don't see the name of the farm, they would see that logo. How many knows when they see the Golden Arch what that is? It's McDonald's. Um, the Apple Sun, everybody knows what that is. So you want to make for sure that you get a branding, you get a logo that's going to set yourself out. You can do wraps, vehicle wraps. You can do trailer wraps. Um, you can do packaging. So if you do CSAs, you can do CSA boxes. You've got to make for sure, though, that you use the Kentucky Proud logo. Um, if you have radio ads, you can do newspaper ads. We had the best farmer's market that had, or not really the best farmer's market, but we had a farmer's market that had the best radio ad. And just really disappointed because in the script and everything that they did, the ad did not say Kentucky Proud. So what happens? You don't get reimbursed for that. So you wanna make for sure that whatever you send in, it's got Kentucky Proud on it, it's showing that. If you have any questions, Jonathan Van Balen is our guru in our office that can give you all of that information and everything on that. And he can tell you um, if it's something that's, uh, what's required or maybe the sizing and everything of the logo. Make for sure though, on this Kentucky Proud application, please make for sure that you fill out the application first, you get it approved, and then you send that in to our office. Now, you wanna make for sure when that application comes in, you wanna make for sure that it's in before the last day of the month because it will go on that next review committee. So if you want to get your application in in April, make for sure it's submitted to our, our, our office before the end of April to be considered for May's Kentucky Proud Grant Committee review. Um, again, please do not spend no money or anything until you get approval. Once you get approval, then you can go out and you can, and you can spend. 
So the Buy Local program, again, this is a program that is known as Restaurant Rewards. This is working with our caterers, um, anybody that is in food service, our chefs, our restaurants. If you can work with them, if you are a Kentucky Proud member and they are a member of the Buy Local program, you can work with them and sell your products to them. What is that gonna do for you? First of all, that's gonna get you a new customer. Next, it may get you recognition on their menu, uh, maybe special of the day. Uh, you may have um, Masters Acres, I hope I got that right, uh, Masters Acres beef um, on the menu for the night. And, and so that's gonna get them some customers. We actually had a customer that came into a restaurant and they actually had blueberry cheesecake was the special for the dessert. The lady got it and she said, that's the best blueberries I've ever had. And the chef said, well, let me tell you where I got them. So what did that do? That linked up the chef with the producer and also linked up the customer to the producer. So that is gonna help out. So our Kentucky Proud Farm to Fork, boy, did that really look different last year. Our Farm to Fork program is usually dinners, set down dinners, set down events. Um, where you have at least 50 in attendance in order to be reimbursed for this. Um, we have a $500 grant this year that can be used towards um, a farm to fork event. A lot of them will highlight our farms. It'll highlight um, our Kentucky Proud producers because of course you wanna use everything that's local. But the big thing is it's gonna help a good cause. Um, it's going to go to a 501c3 charity that you distinguished, that you name. It could be an FFA chapter, could be a food bank. It could be the farmer's market, if that's how your farmer's market and everything is set up. Um, but this is something that's just going to get some uh, special recognition. And the big thing is, it's going to bring a lot of times the city folks with the farmers. Um, so we always say bring the rural and the urban together. Um, and it only, that's always a great opportunity and everything for you to talk to those and tell about your farm, showcase your farm, and just talk, agritour, uh, just talk about um, agriculture. And it also helps a lot of our agritourism farms where a lot of these are the host events. So of course, this was before COVID. How do you know it's before COVID? Well, look at all of those people not doing social distance and there's no mask. Um, but this is kind of before the COVID days, and this is what a Farm to Fork event looks like. Um, great event, great food, got a great chef, Chef Weedle Michaels is there. Um, and then, of course, during COVID. But I tell you what, our locations figured out a way to make this work. Um, that is Michelle Howe and Rhonda from Hotel Inc. over in Warren County at the top corner. And they decided to do baskets and they did all Kentucky Proud products in their baskets and they sold the baskets. People went nuts over this because they wanted something different. Um, they even sent pictures into us showing that they were, took them at home and they set the table and, and had wine on the table and just really made it a neat event and shared all of the photos. Um, we also had down in Meade County, they actually did a, a harvest dinner and they did the social distance. And so it had things a little bit different. Um, Kenton County 4-H did the same thing. They had boxes of food that they sold. And then the bottom corner, um, of course, is one from Greenup County Farmers Market and in Greenup County area. They did the very first farm to fork event that they hosted was over 400 people. And so they were really scared that they would get over 400 people in 2020. And they said, we can't do that. There was no way they could host that. So they had about four or five different choices of food baskets, all Kentucky Proud products. And you'll see a couple of stickers on there. Some of our homegrown by heroes put their products in there as well. And just had a huge turnout. People absolutely just love these baskets. So let's talk farmer's markets. I think that's probably where most people sell is at the farmer's market and they also sell at their on farm. But how do we define a farmer's market? Farmer's markets define where we have two or more producers that they set up or they gather in the same um, on set days and times and they sell products that they grow. We wanna make for sure that a farmer's market is different than a flea market. We wanna make for sure that is agriculture related. 
So the products that you're marking are gonna be your products. Um, we also have value added products. We also have um, arts. We have a lot of um, different farmers markets that is very diverse in some of the products that they have to offer. And you wanna do that. I, I know I said that the produce and the items that you grow, you wanna have that, you wanna have the fresh food, but also to make your market grow, you wanna open it up to have some other vendors that's gonna have some other options and to give you some more choices or give those customers more choices and everything coming in. Um, you'll notice up to that top right hand corner, one of our markets, it's got of course the, the numbers and everything on the ground of, of where customers and everything could come up to. And um, I'm, I'm gonna brag on you guys. Um, our farmers markets, we were so proud of our markets. We gave you all challenges. We gave you all rules and guidelines to follow. And you guys just knocked it out of the ballpark. Um, everybody just jumped in. I, I know it was um, a lot of problems, a lot of issues, and a lot of things that you had to do. But you guys knew, um, customers knew, hey, farmers markets are essential. You know, when these grocery stores started running out of food, they realized, you know what, there's a farmer behind the food in the grocery store. So I said, if there's anything that's ever came out of good out of COVID, that's one thing that our, our folks have realized. There is a farmer behind that food. And also what they've done is they've turned to farmer's markets because they don't want to go to the big box stores. They don't want to go to the grocery stores. There's too many people in the grocery stores. There's too many hands on. So a lot of times they've turned to their farmer's markets and our farmer's market folks, they've sold out um, our roadside markets, our on-farm markets. People could not keep in stock. It was just absolutely amazing. And of course, our meat producers know exactly um, where that issue and everything was. I mean, they couldn't keep the, the stock and it's really hard to meet the demand. Um, but again, very proud of you guys and how everything was handled. Um, our farmers markets continue to grow. Just to give you an example, way back in 1993, we had 43 farmers markets. And as of 2020, we had 167 markets. Those markets are going to, are going to continue to grow. Um, you'll see the number of vendors kind of bounce around a little bit, um, but those numbers stay right about 2,700. Uh, we've been up to about 2,800 at one time. Um, but what happens is, of course, of the, the age group and then farmers, they come in at the farmer's markets and that's how they get their start. Once they get their start there, then they take it back to their on-farm markets or their roadside markets, because that's a good way to build up their customer base. Um, but our markets just continue to excel. We're looking at four or five new farmers markets that's going to be starting for 2021. Um, Nancy Monroe in our office, she is the farmers market guru and the contact if you have any questions or anything. Um, she also does the farmers market uh, registration forms. And so you'll notice on the numbers that we've got in sales on this chart. Um, you'll see that small increase every year it grows and grows. Um, we're really excited to see what 2020 is going to bring because just talking to seven of our markets, they, you know, they said they doubled, they tripled their sales. So it's just been absolutely incredible as far as the, um, the sales and everything that is coming to our markets and to our individual producers. So we have a Kentucky Farmers Market Manual that we put out every two years. Um, we're getting ready to update this manual at the end of 2021, at the end of this year. And in this, in this manual, it covers everything that we think that somebody may need if they're interested in selling at a farmer's market, something that maybe if they're interested in selling a value added product, so such as pet treats. We've got a lot of folks that's doing pet treats. Um, soaps, um, if they're doing lotions. Also, how do, how do I become certified organic if I want to become organic? Um, so we have all of that information in there. We've got all of the changes and everything for the home-based processor that changed the home-based microprocessing. Um, we also, I know we've got a section in here about sampling. So let's go on and get this sampling out. Last year, we asked everybody to hold off on doing sampling at the farmer's market just due to the fact of the touch points. Um, we, were, we were more concerned if we wanted to get the customers in, we wanted to, for them to get their, their food products and then leave. 
Um, we've always looked at our farmer's market as being a social event, a party atmosphere, keeping those customers there. Um, but the last year or so, we've been saying, get your customers, let them buy their stuff and send them along their way. Um, sampling, right now, sampling is still being put on hold. Um, Nancy and myself are working with other states and calling other states to find out exactly how they're handling things. Um, we've got one state that we talked to and they actually have a sampling set a sampling kind of designated area. So if you get a sample from a producer, you go over to that designated area and eat it and then you come back. We thought that was a little overkill or a little bit ridiculous. So we're still working on trying to get how other states are handling it. We've been talking to the CDC. We've also been working with Department for Public Health, Food Safety. Um, we understand, trust me, we have pushed, Nancy and myself, and I know Dr. Tim Woods with UK, we have all pushed sampling sells your product. So we are aware that you guys need to sample. As soon as we can come up with some kind of information and more changes, we will let you know first thing, I promise. So we always do a farmer's market campaign um, every year. And again, what I had talked about, we always talk about it as being a, a social event, a party atmosphere. That is what we looked at in 2019. We had it as a party atmosphere, um, you know, come socialize, come stay for the events, the activities. So 2020, we decided to change it. Um, a lot of people was doing commercials that had people with masks on it. We didn't want everybody to kind of dwell on that. What we wanted is we wanted to showcase and highlight our farmers markets. It's where the fresh food, fresh thinking, um, you know, best tasting food that you can get. So we wanted that to be kind of on people's minds instead of seeing somebody with a mask on going, hey, come to the market. So we um, this this has been a, a really good response. Um, we, we've had several customers and everything real excited about it, saying that the food and everything looks so good. And, and um, so that's, that's made a little bit of a difference. So we want to hear your feedback. Um, if you had negative feedback, positive feedback, let us know. So many of you all, anybody that's got a farm tag, hopefully is aware of the ag tag. Um, the money that is spent, there is a donation that you can make. It's a $10 donation that when you get your farm tags, you renew your farm tags, you can do the $10 donation. And that goes into a pot of money that is divided between FFA, 4-H, and Kentucky Proud. Um, so we were very lucky this year. Commissioner Quarles um, decided he wanted to do something a little bit different. He wanted to have a farmer's market. And he wanted that to be kind of the backdrop and everything for the um, ag tag poster. So we were very excited. So if you go around to your county clerk's office, you may see this poster. You may see it on with 4-H or FFA. Um, but, but we actually went to the Hardin County Farmers Market down in Elizabethtown and we did the ag tag photo shoot. Um, Nancy and I went down and set it up last fall and we got the pictures and everything all taken and we were so excited. We had so many good shots and we were getting ready to put them out on social media and they told us we could not put that out until they released this picture or whatever in 2021. So that's why you all didn't get to hear about it until now, but now we can talk about it. Um, but we did have a, a very good day. This is uh, Commissioner Quarles, of course, with the um, vendors at the Hardin County Farmers Market. Um, this is kind of a, a special picture. Um, we had a we had a really good day, a uh, great event. The the vendors were so excited and everything about us being there and hosting the event. Um, since this time, we have lost two um, of our valuable vendors there at the Hardin County Farmers Market um, that made such a big difference and um, a, a big dent and everything in the community. So it was a big loss for them, but. So look back at this, they were so excited about us being there. And so kind of happy and a, a little bit of sad um, to go along with that. So when you sell at the farmer's market and when you also sell at your on-farm, did you know that you could take SNAP? SNAP is Supplemental Nutrition Assistant Program. That program is also known as food stamps. 
So you can take those at the farmer's market. I'm not for sure. I don't think some of the farmer's markets that's on here. I don't think you guys actually take the SNAP program at your farmer's market. But we want you to be able to accept SNAP either at your on-farm market, your roadside market, or at the farmer's market. If your farmer's market does not want to take it as a whole, which a lot of times it's, it's a little bit unique because you have to have a lot of accounting um, when the farmer's market does it, you have to make for sure that you've got a booth set up to where you've got a machine where somebody can take that. Um, so a lot of times we'll have individual producers sign up for this. We have the SNAP program and then we also have PEBT. So what's PEBT? PEBT is the pandemic EBT. So it is the pandemic SNAP card. Um, anybody that has school kids, you may know about this. If you have a free lunch program for your kids at school, sometimes it's low income. Um, sometimes it's every kid in school gets a free lunch. Anybody that um, gets the free lunch through that school program received a PEBT card. That card is a card that can be spent at a farmer's market. It could be spent at a grocery store and it could be spent at your on-farm your on market or your roadside market. So you could sell your meat products. You can sell your tomatoes. Um, you can sell any vegetables or anything that you have, any cold crops, anything that you may have. If you have poultry, um, any value-added products, baked goods, you can use that for your SNAP and you can use that for your EBT. <clears throat> So I was going through the list of products that you could buy. These are products that you can use for your SNAP card, also for the PEBT card. So what you wanna do, if your farmer's market doesn't wanna take that, if you think that you may wanna take that, please send me an email or please call me. My contact information will be at the end of this. April's got it and I think I've seen Philip and, and Macy's on here. So most everybody knows how to get in touch with me. But we can walk you through that application process. You can do that online. It's a free process to get signed up. You go online and sign up. They're going to ask you for some information. They're going to ask you for some personal information. But then after that, you can also get a free EBT machine. It's not going to take debit and credit cards, but it is going to take the SNAP card. This is customers that you all may be missing. So you want to take a look at that. Again, you've got your, your food items that you can buy. So it says seeds and plants. So if you are selling plants in the spring, and if you've got tomato plants, pepper plants, uh, I'm drawing a blank, anything that produces food on that, on that plant, you can actually um, sell that to somebody using their SNAP card. Now, of course, all of those product, products listed below those are items and everything that you cannot accept. Um, I did, when I first got started with the SNAP program, one lady told me that there was somebody that tried to buy a used car with their SNAP card. So please don't try to do that. Um, I thought she was kidding me, but she said she was serious. So let's move from farmer's markets into Kentucky agritourism. Um, that's part of the program also in the direct farm marketing group that I'm in. So Kentucky tourism. Tourism is a major contributor to Kentucky's economy. Um, we had, and I apologize, my screen's all blank. In 2018, we had 71.6 million visitors, spent nearly 7.6 billion in Kentucky. That's an increase of 3.7 over the prior year. So agritourism is becoming a part of Kentucky experience. Um, you talk to a lot of our roadside markets, you'll talk to a lot of our pumpkin patches, you'll talk to a lot of our on-farm markets, People are realizing that because with 2020, with COVID, folks decided they're going to stay close to home. They didn't want to travel other than a day trip. So it was just absolutely incredible to see the amount of people that went on our farms and everything last year. So we define Kentucky agritourism. There is a KRS, which is Kentucky Revised Statute, that defines agritourism in Kentucky. It's the act of visiting a working farm in any agriculture, horticulture, or agribusiness operation for the purpose of enjoyment, education, and active involvement in the activities of the farm or operation. Um, so you'll know that, notice one of our lavender farms. Uh, a lot of times you may have a U-pick operation. You may have a corn maze. You've got a pumpkin patch. 
Um, also weddings. Weddings has become a big thing on, on the farms. Um, but what is agritourism going to do? Agritourism is going to give you an opportunity to showcase your farm. It's going to get folks onto the farm that may not even know where their food comes from. So that's going to give them an opportunity to come in and to see all of that and to get some hands on. It's also possibly going to give you more customers and another way to diversify your farm if you're looking for that. So here's some of the agritourism um, locations and things that we've got listed. Um, we've got, of course, we've got our horse farms. We've got our um, anything that has to do around ag education. So talking about livestock, getting them to come to the farm and, and walking them through a day on the farm. You know, don't, and that's probably one of my, my problems. My husband and I farm here in Franklin County as well as work for KDA. Um, one of my problems is I'm always putting all of the good things on there about farm life. Um, you know, mine is, anybody that's friends with Facebook, uh, they'll see all of my baby calves. Every time I got a baby calf, I'll put one on there. It's, it's cute, it's precious, it's fun, and everybody likes that. You don't see the, the rough side or the hard side to farming. Share that as well. Um, I'm trying to get better at it. I'm doing a little. I've, I've tried to uh, showcase a little bit of it through some winter things that we had. And, um, you know, if something happens, if, you know, if you lost one of your favorite cows or, you know, if something happens on the farm, the tractor breaks down or, you know, just any little thing, show them. It's not always a glorious day on the farm. But under Kentucky Agritourism, under the Kentucky Proud Program, you can be a member of Agritourism. Also, we have a separate marketing program. So just like with Homegrown by Heroes, also with Appalachia Proud, we have also a program that is called Kentucky Farms for Fun. Uh, Kentucky Farms for Fun is Kentucky Agritourism, and that is another marketing opportunity for you. And that allows you to um, put more information out there about your operation. And we can also share some photos out there on that website under Kentucky Farms are Fun. Uh, this is also, we do a fall agritourism promotional program. And we also list any of our fall activities and we'll put that information out there on our website. So if somebody is looking um, for that. So we try to do campaigns um, revolving around each of the seasons to try to get people out to the farms, to the farmers markets. So. Educational and funding, um, some opportunities and some resources for you. So just wanted to let you know about a training opportunity. Most of you all might have already seen this, but with the Kentucky Farmers Market, with the Kentucky Fruit and Vegetable Conference, um, we had all of that virtually this year. We, we didn't get to meet. That was always something I always look forward to. It's a, it's a great way to kick off the new year and, and to uh, catch up with the producers and see what everybody's doing, my old friends. Um, so we, we got to do that virtually this year and last, let's see, 2019, anybody that attended the Fruit and Vegetable Conference, we added a farmer's market short course. Thinking we had about 20, 25, 30 people sign up, we had over 100 people attend that first session for that. That was even before the Fruit and Vegetable Conference started. So we realized there's a need for that. So this year we took it online. So this is the link for you to go into the farmer's market short course. If you missed it, I highly recommend, I'm still going to go back in and watch it again because we had some great resources. We even linked in with a lady with the Tennessee extension office. Um, Megan was a wealth of information and just linking in, looking how other states helps. Um, Wendy Abbott with the Kentucky State University. Oh my gosh, I wish I could just pick her brain on doing social media. Um, just the information that she provides is absolutely great. So we also had, um, besides the fruit and vegetable and the farmer's market short course, we also started out with something called Direct Farm Market Summit um, for this year too. And so we've got three, it was a three night session. And this is also social media marketing. Um, the third night, we showcased um, several of our producers and let them talk about their operations and that is how you learn things. You network with your fellow producers. That's how you pick up everything. So please make for sure, I'll make for sure that April or somebody has this and they can pass this along, but make for sure that you pick up on these YouTubes. They're out there on YouTube, so you can watch them at your leisure and it's, they're, they're great opportunities for you. 
Um, special thanks though to, to Cindy at the Kentucky Horticulture Council and, and Bethany, they did an awesome job on planning this. Um, we had a great team and everything that worked together. And so these are some good opportunities for you. So please make sure you go out and take a look at those. So talking about some of the groups that we also work with, we kind of partner with, um, they help support our farmers markets, Community Farm Alliance, CFA. Um, they have a farmers market support program that they work with the farmers markets on getting the double dollars program started. So if your market takes the senior program, which I heard you all talking about the senior and the WIC program, you all are getting ready to start the training for that. That is great. Those are programs great for the clients and get those benefits, but it's also great for you because it gets you a different customer and everything coming to your market. And if you offer, offer the double dollars program with CFA, that's going to allow you to get, of course, more money coming in, but it's also going to allow those customers to get double their benefits. Um, they also have workshops and trainings that they do. So they've got, I've got their website and everything listed. If you want to reach out to them. And of course, the Kentucky Office of Agriculture Policy, um, formerly known as GOAP. Um, this program works with our farmers markets. I'm so excited about this group because this helps our farmers markets actually get a permanent home. So if your farmers market does not have a structure, and if you're interested in thinking that you can get the city, the county, everybody involved of, we want to develop and get a permanent home for our farmers market, they can help you get money. They can help you get up to 250,000 to help you support that and to make that dream kind of come true. They also provide a lot of the funding for a lot of the different groups that we work with. Um, and then also um, Bill McCloskey, I was talking to him today with um, the Ag Policy Office. And he did say that uh, the cost share program at the county level, they're expected to uh, get another $14 million after May the 1st for that. Those are your county funds. This is tobacco settlement money that came in. And this is your county funds that comes in that helps with getting fencing on the farm, helps getting waters, um, maybe technology, if you're looking at getting into the technology. So all of the different products that maybe that you can want to maybe expand your farming operation. KCARD, I can't say enough about them. Kentucky Center for Agriculture and Rural Development. Um, Alita Botts and her staff are absolutely jewels to work with. They help you from anything from board training if the board's not getting along or the board needs some guidance as far as we want to be maybe a nonprofit, we want to be um, incorporated. How do we do that if we want to be an LLC? Um, the big thing is, though, with our individual producers, once you're getting started into something, you want a goal, you want something to reach, you want to know what's my business plan, how can I go from point A to point H and make for sure that I don't mess up in between. Alita Bots, her staff, K Card, please call them, they can help you walk through a business plan, they can tell you what's maybe not exactly what you need to do, but they can advise you on, on how to go through that. They offer workshops, um, so if you ever get the opportunity to go to the one shops, their workshops are highly recommended. They also help with grants. Um, they may not write the grant for you, but they will give you some assistance and everything on that. So Kentucky Farm Bureau Certified Farm Market Program. Um, many, many may have already known this as Kentucky Farm Bureau Certified Roadside Market Program. Um, last year they celebrated 25 years, so they changed the name of their program. They wanted to give it a whole new look for 2020. So you will notice that they have a, a new logo. Um, it's kind of a fresh look and everything to it. Um, but if you're interested in signing, whoops, sorry. If you're interested in signing up for that, um, there is the, the website, Frame a Call, Joe Kane are great to work with. Um, this program is a great program. It highlights, um, it highlights what you do on the farm. If you've got a roadside market, uh, they also have an educational tour, educational sessions, but they have an educational um, out-of-state travel tour that you can go on. And a lot of times the best way to learn things is networking from other producers. You'll hear me say that a lot, but that's how you learn things. And a lot of times when you go to these out-of-state tours, you can bring those back because maybe somebody in Kentucky is not doing that and you can pick that idea up. 
and they're going to they're going to enjoy you showcasing whatever they're doing on their farm and bringing it back to Kentucky because you're not going to be a competition to them. So that's the way you actually get some ideas and, and you can share those. Kentucky State University, they've got their land grant program, um, working with Joni Nelson and uh, Dr. Pomper, all of that staff and everything over there to the research farm. Um, they help you with certified organic farming questions. Everybody knows they're famous for their pawpaws. Um, they do have a small, set, small scale farm grant program. Um, they've got a mobile processing unit, Steve Skelton, and everything is a great resource to talk to on the poultry. Um, they also have a mobile kitchen, a mobile processing unit. Most of that is on the farm. Um, they've been shut down and everything for a while. They've been limited on what they can do with COVID. And so I'm sure everybody has missed the third Thursday things, but they are also doing a lot of virtual trainings and all. So if you have any questions on any of their programs, just reach out to that group. Again, I'm talking about the UK Extension. I uh, can't say enough good things about them. They are always there to provide educational workshops, just like tonight. Um, they have got this resource and everything available for you. They're a big farmer's market support for us. Uh, I always say cooking demonstrations. Normally, in uh, normal years, you're always out there at the farmer's market cooking. Um, you know when you're at the farmer's market and you've got that cooking and that smell going, customers are going to buy more. So we will get back to that. We will get back to that. So um, Plated Up Kentucky Proud, great program if you need. Recipe cards for certain products. We've got those out there. Um, they have some really good recipes. Also, the Center for Crop Diversification, um, uh, Christy Chastity and our Cassidy and Brett Wolf, um, Dr. Tim Woods, absolutely great at what they do and they provide, try to provide as much information. You can sign up for a newsletter that Brett sends out. Um, so there is the website that you can join. They also do the price reports at farmers markets and produce auctions. So if you've got tomatoes, if you've got maybe something special that you're not really for sure how you're going to price it. I know somebody last year called us about okra. Um, you know, how much can I price okra for? So there's a lot of different information that you can get. Market ready trainings is a, a great training to go through if you're looking at taking that next step further from doing your on-farm market to farmer's markets to going to retail to uh, taking that next level. So great resource and everything to use. So you've heard me talk about probably some social media trainings. Um, if you are a Kentucky Proud member, and make for sure that you highlight, um, hashtag us in anything that you do on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, you'll notice we've got over 120,000 followers. Um, so people are actually going to be looking for different items, looking for different products. Um, but if you've got something that you want to showcase, put that out there. And again, make for sure that you hashtag Kentucky Proud in it. And then we also have marketing Facebook groups. We have it for our Kentucky Proud members and we have it for our Appalachia Proud members. Now, I will tell you, this is, this is closed group that you can join. This is not for you to market your products on. This is to network. Uh, there's that word again. This is to help you network. This is to help you um, if you're looking for certain items. If you've got a question, if maybe you've got a disease or something in your tomatoes or, you know, and you just can't get the help that you need. Um, this is going to be kind of a resource for you, and, and it'll allow you to, um, to um, reach out to folks that's kind of along in the same line as you. So we've got our Kentucky Proud at cost items, and of course, normally if I was in person, I'd be bringing items and everything with me that you can purchase. Um, right now in our office, we are taking orders. You can mail the orders in. If you want to pick up, you have to please call for um, an appointment. We have to make for sure that we have those limited. Um, if you do need items, let me know. It could be that I may be in your area or we could have somebody in your area. We've got everything from labels to hats to banners, um, shopping bags. Everybody uses our Kentucky Proud shopping bags. Um, we've got the new Appalachia Proud logo product. So make for sure that you go online to uh, kyproud.com and look at those new versions and everything of those. 
So uh, again, when I was talking about the Kentucky Proud products, um, if you're also looking for a CSA operation, if you're looking for maybe a farmer's market, maybe if you want to pick up maybe another farmer's market to sell at, um, if you decide that you want to do agritourism and maybe go around and kind of check out our agritourism locations, what we've got. Here is our, our three different websites that you can check out. Um, also on the kyagr.com, that is the Kentucky Department of Agriculture website. So if you need to have scales checked, if you need to, um, maybe possibly anything else that you may have to have, if you're looking at the hemp program, if you're looking at doing certified organic, we've got all of that information and everything out there. Plus as well as our food safety. Um, uh, we've got a food safety group, Mark Reed and his staff does a great job of talking and, and doing the produce safety training. So if you need to reach out to them, either let me know or you can go out there to the website and get their information. And as promised, there is my contact information. Um, it's got my direct line, my mobile line. I highly recommend for you just to call me on my mobile. Um, some of the producers that I know that's probably on this call, they even have my personal cell phone number. So you all ought to feel really special. Um, but seriously, if you need to reach out to me, most people, they'll find me on Facebook and everything too. So you got a question, shoot something to me. Uh, if, if I don't know the answer, most people will know. If I don't know the answer, I'll tell you. I don't know, but we will find out for you and we will get that information for you. Uh, I hope I haven't wore everybody out. I, I get to be a talker. Um, so I will, I'm going to turn it back over to April or I'm going to see if maybe there's any questions. Okay, um, thank you, Sharon, so much. Uh, that was a wonderful presentation with a lot of great information. Um, I did get a text message just to confirm if someone is already accepting EBT, then they automatically can accept PEBT, correct? Correct, correct. And I just also found out, um, I had a, another individual was asking me, could they take an out-of-state um, EBT card? You can take an out-of-state SNAP card. Um, once you get approved for that, you can take that. You can take that at the farmer's market. You can take those at your on-farm market. Even if you pull up in a parking lot and you've got extra corn or something maybe that you're selling, just make for sure that you've got access to where you can scan that card. I will remind everybody though, make for sure that when you've got that card, you get an approval on that card before that customer leaves. We did have a market where an individual had the card and what happened? what happened was they couldn't get it to go through and the person says that's okay that's okay just you know just keep trying and so she left and and she stuck with she stuck the vendor with $25 um so she knew the card wasn't good because it came back rejected I don't know what happened to it but always make for sure that the card goes through before your customer leaves so all right. Um, if anybody has any questions, um, you, you're welcome to come off of mute right now, or you can type it in the chat box. Um, we did have a, a message in the chat box just saying, please bring back sampling. I know everyone is ready for that. Um, so hopefully COVID numbers declining, it'll, it'll be something that can hopefully happen um, sooner rather than later, but we will, we will see. I have a question, April. Okay, Molly, go ahead. My question is the the picture where she showed the items that the, you can purchase, the, the Kentucky Proud bags. There was a brown bag there with a wooden type handle, the brown. I wanted to know if we could get those with Kentucky Proud logo on those. I knew when I was putting that picture out there, I kind of wondered if somebody would ask or even even the container, um, like the, the basket that was there that had that. Um, we have asked, we, we've had a couple of people that has asked about the brown craft bag. I think maybe is that what you were talking about, Molly? Yes. Okay. The brown craft bags we have asked, we had those years ago and for some reason, People just did not want those. Um, what we try to do is we try to look at items that we are going to be able to buy and we're going to be able to sell that is going to be able to be sold at a reasonable price. 
So we wanna make for sure that we can keep the prices and everything low for you. We had uh, a soap producer that was asking to do the bags. And we said, well, we figured the, the big bags that they were talking about that they got prices for was like a big shopping bag. Like you would get at Kroger's years ago the the big paper shopping bags. And we said, that's too big. You know, we want it smaller. And they said, well, we're not gonna be able to give you like three or four different sizes. Um, so one of the things that Nancy and I kind of talked about was maybe go to Yule Line, um, maybe go to, I think it's Ballman Paper. Um, I've had people that has told me that they have got paper bags from there before. And then if nothing else, if you can buy those little gift bags or something, I, I know Yule Line has those because I have actually looked at them for myself. And if you buy those bags, you can always get the Kentucky Proud stickers and put the stickers on them. And that may be cheaper than what we would be able to get them for. What we've got is the t-shirt bags. When I say the t-shirt bags, it's the bags like at Kroger's or Walmart. That is the plastic shopping bags that you can get. Um, we are looking at those some other items. So we're hoping that we're gonna be able to have, I don't know for this market season, but we're hoping we may be able to have some different opportunities. It's just trying to keep that price down and everything for everybody. Okay, well, I've got one more question where you were talking about the Kentucky Proud stickers. Well, how much are those a row? I sell plants out of my greenhouse at my home and I would like to have something to say Kentucky Proud for the bags that I put them in. That way the people will know. Okay, this says Kentucky Proud on, on the bag or Kentucky Proud on? The stickers that you were talking about that you put on bags. Okay, because if you if you have, um, they're, they're pretty much, they're pretty cheap. Uh, if you will hold on one second, I'll get you the prices of them. There's three different sizes that you can get. You And, and if you're wanting them on, um, like, are you wanting to put them on your pots? No, I, I do float beds. So I pull everything and wrap it with newspaper. And then I, I put it in a size larger than a candy brown bag. And I would like to get something like that on it. And could you tell me if they could personalize those or would you have to go somewhere else to order them? Um, as far as personalized, as far as the label? Yes, the Kentucky Proud sticker. Okay, the only thing that the Kentucky Proud sticker would have it would be Kentucky Proud logo. Um, and there wouldn't be room or anything on there to actually have that personalized. If, if that's something that you're wanting to have personalized, you almost need to have your own label made. Now, if you have your own label made, don't forget, you got the Kentucky Proud promotional grant. Um, I don't know, April, I don't know, can I sh share my screen again? Yeah, you should be able to share still. Okay, let's see if this comes up right, I hope. I don't see it yet. Oh, there we go. There we go. All right, this is just a few of the products. Now, of course, we've got the Appalachia Proud and everything as well, um, but this is the Kentucky Proud stickers that we have. So we have the three different sizes. What you would probably want is the larger size, which is about a one and a half to buy three inch sticker. Um, we do have banners. Now the banners has got the logo on it to where you can actually take the banner and have it personalized. Um, but these are also, here is your Appalachia Proud. We only have one size in the Appalachia Proud sticker. Um, it's pretty good size. It's like one and a half inch round. Um, so it's a it's a pretty good size. Plus, also, then you've got your um, banner that you can get and you can also have that personalized. Um, but these are some of the new products uh, that we've got listed. The hats are pretty cool. Uh, we've also got the new price cards. Um, price cards are really good to use um, when you're at the farmers markets. That way, if somebody doesn't want to ask, uh, you may have customers that's not a talker like me and that will come up and ask you one question right after the other. Um, I've, I've got a friend that when we went someplace, I was talking to everybody that walked by me and she's like, why are you talking to them? You don't know them. And so I said, do you not talk to anybody? She doesn't like for somebody to ask her, may I help you? She says, if I want to be helped, I'll let them know. 
And she said, I don't ask for a price. And she said, if it doesn't have a price on it, I just turn and walk away. So perfect example, make for sure you've got your products marked, you've got your products and everything listed, um, and you've got them priced. Also, when you've got them priced, um, and you've got somebody that comes up with one of the nutritional program um, vouchers or even a SNAP card, they can't say that you are price gouging or discriminating because they've got a benefit um, that they've been given to use at the market. Um, that way you've got, um, you've got the prices and everything listed and it's, it's gonna be showcasing that. Um, but let's see, let me see if I can get you the order for or the cost. All right, this will give you an example. Now we do have to put shipping on this. Um, so if you're looking at the big three inch oval stickers, like what we talked about, if you come to the office and pick them up, or if, if there's a big enough order, I can possibly drop that off at either the farmer's market or I can drop it off at the extension office. If we can just arrange somebody to leave checks there and I can just pick them up. Um, the price for the sticker, if you buy it and it's either dropped off or you pick it up is $2.50. It's a roll of 500. I think that's very reasonable. I mean, that's, you, that's why we said, you can maybe buy those bags and put the sticker and everything on the bags. Um, the oval stickers, the little bitty small ones, those are good for jams and jellies or honey. Um, those are a dollar for 500 or $3 for shipping. All of these um, will include the prices. Now the Appalachia Proud stickers, they're an inch, they're one and a half inch circle and they're 250 or 450 if we mail those. The banners are a little bit more pricey the shopping bags is what gets you. The shopping bags is a box of a thousand and it's the plastic t-shirt bags. Um, they're $38 if we have to mail those and that's per box. And they're $18.50 if we drop them off or if you come in and pick those up. Are the prices the same whether you get the Appalachia or if you get the standard Kentucky Proud? Prices are gonna be different. Um, what you'll have to do is go into our Kentucky Proud. Um, go, you can go on to www.kyproud.com and you can look at the order form and it'll have all of the different prices. Okay, thank you. Uh-huh. And Molly um, and everyone, I will I will email uh, a follow up email to everybody as well, and I'll include in that the order form so that y'all have it um, readily available as well. All right, any other questions? You're welcome to come off mute or to put it in the chat box. Well, um, I don't see anything else right now. So if anyone does have any questions, you're welcome to reach out to us um, agents and we're, we'll reach out to Sharon or you can reach Sharon directly either way. Um, we're happy to, to help with anything. And Sharon, thank you again so much for your presentation. It was, it was wonderful. Um, do you care to share that presentation with me? Because I know some folks uh, like to have it readily available as well. I know last, last one um, presentation we had, we emailed it out afterwards. If not, it's no biggie. Um, we also yes, no, no, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be more than happy to share it to you. I'll, uh, I'll send it to you by email. Yeah, that'd be perfect. Thank you so much. And just a reminder again, folks, um, our next and final um, session of the farmer's market training is April the 20th. Um, at 6 p.m. via Zoom, and that will be over our senior WIC voucher training. Um, so anyone who's going to be accepting or wants to accept senior WIC vouchers, you have to attend the training. Um, be looking in your mailbox for the applications and all the paperwork that have to go with that, because those are due the end of the month. Um, so we will have to get them back in a timely manner, but we'll try to get them to y'all next week. That way you'll have it for the April 20th meeting. Um, April. A lot of signatures. When, yes, when do we drop the scales off to get checked? Um, that will be in May. I will let all the Fleming County folks, I'll let y'all know um, about that. I'll, I'll include that in your mailing for anybody. Okay, thank you. Okay. 
Um, and what Molly's talking about for anybody who's not in Fleming County, um, if you are selling anything by the pound, uh, you have to have scales um, and they have to be certified. And so we have Ronnie Little come out and make sure that your scales are working properly each year. Um, so if anybody has any questions about that, get with your extension agent in your county, okay? Um, but other than that, any last minute questions? If not, we're gonna jump off here and everyone will have a few more few more minutes, about an hour left of daylight and nice warm weather. April, we're gonna have a scale check in Mason County on April 22nd. And okay. if ever, anybody needs to bring it down, um, he'll be there on the 22nd, I think at like 10 o'clock. So we always have those dropped off before. Okay, so that's for anybody in Mason County. Um, that is on April 22nd, Fleming County, it's May. I'll get with you on that one. Um, Philip, do you have any information? I don't have anything scheduled yet. Nope, I'm good. Okay. All right, well, we will probably have more information about that to y'all at our April 20th meeting as well. So. If y'all need anything in the meantime, just let us know. And, and Sharon, thank you again so very much. We greatly appreciate you. April, thank you. I tell you what, this group, uh, I always enjoy, like I said, I always enjoy getting to see everybody. And a uh, little shout out to my techno cowboy. Didn't have no problem. Uh, oh, Philip or whatever. We, uh, we had a little partnership that we all got to work together in a lot of different regions and, and to do a farmer's market training. And I always look so forward to that and such a great group. And so this has been great. Really appreciate it. Uh, again, if anybody's interested in the EBT, um, please reach out to me. We can get you free EBT equipment. Take advantage of that opportunity. And like I said, any questions whatsoever that we can help you with, you've got my contact information. So that's what we're here for. So thanks, guys. We greatly appreciate it.